So welcome to another floppy deep dive. Today we're going to be testing out some of the hardware that I got from that mother low video that I made last weekend and picked up. And so now this weekend I have time to actually test it to see how it works. So today we are going to be testing the Commodore 128, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with, but a lot of us just like me grew up just with the Commodore 64. So this would be you know, my first Commodore 128 and learning the new features and different things about it. Uh, the biggest thing is that it has multiple operating systems on there. Uh, obviously it's backwards compatible with Commodore 64 with a lot of people use, but it also has the 40 and 80 column mode that we're gonna be trying out today. So now that we got the 1902 monitor that we're testing, we're also going to be testing this Commodore 128, make sure it works okay and the different functions on it. And then also I'm going to be hooking it up to the 1571 that I picked up that I'll also be testing to make sure that all three of those pieces of hardware will work. And if we got more time, we'll dig into some of the other drives that I picked up. But the big ones I wanted to test out is make sure that my Commodore 128 works, make sure my 1902 monitor works, and make sure that the 1571 is also working. So let's get started. So on the Commodore 128, which you may or may not know, it has multiple inputs in the back. And the reason is, is you're gonna have to plug in multiple inputs for the 80 column mode to work and to make the Commodore 64 mode work properly, which is the typical red, white, and we'll go more into that when I'm showing you the 1902 monitor. But here on the back, You've got your over here that the Commodore 64 does not have is this is the one to be able to plug in the RGB to make sure that you could go into 80 column mode. Uh, you have your everything else, typical cartridge port, uh, your, your video and to be able to plug in your drive. But the big one I want to show you on the back is this one right here. We got to plug into directly so we can be able to use that 80 column mode. So I just wanted to pinpoint that. So let's get it hooked up to the monitor, let's get it hooked up to the drive, and let's see if this sucker powers up. So the first item we're going to be testing out is this 1902 monitor. Uh, did not get a chance to test it out last weekend, so we're going to get it all set up and working today. And hopefully, well, see if that it works. And go over a little bit about it, because I did not have a 1902 monitor in the 80s. Um, I just had an old TV set hooked up the old school way. So, and I did not have a Commodore 128. And the Commodore 128 has these different operating systems in it, as most of y'all know, the 40 and 80 display, but I wasn't really sure how exactly it worked or how it hooked up to the TV. So, doing a little research, luckily, this came along with the 1802 manual, which which must be very similar because I'm assuming this came with the 1802. The 1902 still came with this manual. I'm assuming, I'm guessing, but a lot of it's very similar. So it helped me out see exactly how we're going to be hooking this thing up. As you can see, it's really pretty clean on here. look at the back when we look on the back on here we've got these different things to plug into so we got the normal uh, um, components to plug into with the red the yellow the white the normal hookups the composite that I'm used to hooking up with but we also have uh, something different we also have the monochrome right here where I can hook up the RGB, uh, RGB input. And this is for the 40 and the 80 display. So 40 display over here for the composite, 80 for the RGB input over here. And so, I, like I said, I've never had to hook up multiple before on the Commodore 64. So for me, this was new. So. I figured there's other new people getting a 128 for the first time. So this is what I've learned and maybe this will help you along too. So with the 1902, 
when you're in your Commodore 64 mode, you will use the composite side. And when you're in your 80 column mode, you will use your monochrome side. So hopefully this works. Um, I have all the connectors and everything to hook up to this monitor. So I'm going to get it all hooked up to my uh, 128 that I got in the collection last weekend. And let's see that the 128 works. Now let's see if this monitor works and we'll try the different modes and so forth. But again, don't let it confuse you. There's just two different types. When it's 80 column, use the RGP input. And when you're in the Commodore 64 mode, use the composite mode. It's that simple. So we'll get that hooked up and then we'll get this turned around and I'll let you see what's, see how it looks when we get it all turned on. So on the front side here, we have the controls and I just want to look at really quick. You've got your horizontal position, your vertical hold, the color the control, the tint color, the bright, the contrast, the volume, and the most important that's a little bit different that if you might not be used to is you, your video mode. So this mode right here, the video mode is the little bit different than most screens just so you gotta make sure that you're in the right mode. You have your composite mode, your separated mode, and you got your monochrome mode. The Commodore 64 will work in both the composite mode and the separated mode. And the Commodore 128 will work in the separated mode in the monochrome mode, the RG, uh, RGB mode. And so you just gotta make sure that you're selected in the right thing when you're going forward to make sure that it works. And so we'll go ahead and get started, get this hooked up to the 128. And let's see if this monitor works. So we're going to try the 128 out. We got it now all hooked up, all the cables in the back. Uh, we got our uh, RGB plugged in, or we will get it plugged in right here. And we got our video cable for composite, and we've got our 1571 hooked up. So let's go ahead and get this turned on. So we're going to try Swift Calc, and we're going to try 128 in 80 column mode and see if this 1571 works and this monitor works and make sure the 128 works. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And the cool thing about the 128, if you never used it before, is that it has this auto booting. Uh, when you grew up in the Commodore 64 world like me, there's no such thing as auto booting. So when this happened, I was like, what kind of witchcraft is this that we could already starts right up? But I'm sure all you who had 128s before knew that, but actually very cool loads right into this program i'm using this swift kelp 128 because it works in the 80 column mode uh, you can't play commodore 64 games in the 80 column mode so there's you got to have a certain program that will actually work with it and as you can see it booted right up and we're right into the spreadsheet use it by moving around it's not really a video about swift calc 128 but i just wanted to make sure that this program works in 128 mode and everything was working so the monitor worked perfect i got it in the rgb mode and it booted right up in the 80 so now let's shut it off and see if we could just boot into the regular 128 mode and i got a game that i'm going to give it a shot it's kickstart on the road simulator, but it's for a Commodore 128 only. So this is supposed to boot up directly into in Commodore 128 mode. One of the few games that does. So let's give it a shot. Boots right up, it seems to be working perfectly.
so 128 mode works perfectly. And when we boot up, you hold down the calm order button, I'm told. And when you start up, it brings you right into the Commodore 64 mode. So now I'm in the Commodore 64 mode. And let's grab another floppy just because I want to have random floppies that this 1571 is loading up. So let's go ahead and bring this up. Let's try this very first time. This one just fine. Let's try the Port Apocalypse. Let's see if it works. And there we go. Another neat little thing I got along with my 128, besides the mouse, which I haven't tested out the mouse yet. But I got this little joystick, this little Suncom joystick right here. I'm going to plug it in and test it right now. Let's see if it works with Port Apocalypse. And give it another go. There we go. Let's give us some fuel. Take off and go. So it looks like this little handy dandy joystick right here is working just fine. It looks like it's just supposed to mount right here on the front like this i assume there's some kind of sticky or something that held it right there and then it also has on the back side where you can plug a real joystick directly in there or a mouse directly in there i believe the mouse is exactly just like the joystick yeah so the joystick so you could have the mouse the joystick plugged in and have the mouse plugged in directly into the joystick and have it all hooked up together in the port. So, very cool. Everything seems to be working. The 128's working. The 1571's loading just fine. And the monitor looks great. Looks really good. So, so far, so good. Everything that I've tested on here. So it looks like it was a good purchase. And uh, let's test some of this other hardware, see if it's all working too. So now I'm gonna try my Commodore 5041C that I also got. And uh, just connected it again to the 128. So I got multiple drives. Working on that. Let's go to 64 mode. Load up the game. Refresh first on here. Load it up perfectly. So the 1541C drive seems to be working perfectly. Let's move down to the 1541 that I got and make sure that it's working okay too, I'm testing that drive. It's time. Let's put a fast load cartridge in here. I'm gonna put warp speed in here in 64 mode, just because I'm tired of waiting for it to load and it's spoiled. Check this thing out and see if it works. So straight into 64 mode. I think this loads just like fast load cartridge. And that 
seem to load up pretty quick. Just load the first thing on this floppy. Everything seems to be working just fine on this for this game. I drive loaded it right up, so it seems to be working just perfectly too. So, so far of the three drives I got, the 1571, 1541, and then C and the 1541 all seem to be operating just fine. I have not opened them up yet to see what kind of cleaning needs to be done. I just want to see if they'd run floppies off the first try. And they are, they're actually working rather good. So I'm going to now go to the 1541-2 and the 1581 to see if those work. So now you see my tower of uh, floppy drives, disk drives that I got. I added my 1541-2 and the 1581 on here. And if you didn't know, they're much smaller because they took the power supply out of it. So here's the 1581 power supply for the 1581. And you can see how small the 1581 is. And then for the 1541-2, I also have a power supply that goes along with it. It's much smaller than the 1581 power supply, just if you didn't notice it. I, um, the 1581 does work with the 1541-2, also, if I want to use this power supply, but I have two separate ones, so I'll plug them both in and when we're going to be testing them. I just wanted to point out that they have power supply. And why they're so much smaller, because if you look at it, here's a 1541 side view, 1541 2, 1581 on top, and how much smaller the 1581 is and how much smaller the 1541 is compared to something like the 1571, which is much, much, let's see if I can get it in this frame here, much, much longer, much, much bigger than the 1541 and the 1571, where the 1571 has the power supply inside it. And then let me see if I can get the, over here, compare the two, 1541-2 to the original 1541-C, how much bigger this big old berth is down here compared to the 1541-2. So without that power supply in there, it's got much smaller, but let's go ahead and get them tested and see if they work with my 128 and that both these drives are working for me. So I got my 1541-2 hooked up now to my 128. I'm going to give it a shot to see how it works. Again, I still got the warp speed cartridge in here, so I'm just going to do a directory. I hope it reads. And it did not. one didn't read sometimes I think these labels on here don't get it fit in there like it should because they're coming unglued the biggest thing I've found after 30 years that falls apart on these things is the glue just wears out on your labels and your labels start falling off of your floppies and I think that's the main thing that I've seen that falls apart There we go. And now it does it does a directory just fine on the front and on the back. So it seems to be working. Let's go ahead and load something up and make sure it loads up okay. The 
This version of Blue Max is actually broken by the Bandit. And I know the Bandit's on one of the uh, Facebook groups. I'm not sure which one. I think the 64128 one. But anyway, I thought it was pretty cool to have one of the people who do the crackings on, on with it. There's the classic Blue Max. So everything is reading directories, it's loading just fine. Uh, my final test I'll do on most, all of these is I'll, I'll format something on there, but uh, right now I just want to test that they power on, that they read disk, and they're running. Um, like I said, I'll open all these up and clean them and make sure that everything's good inside, but right now I just want to make sure that it was actually working. And so far the 15412 is working just fine, reading the disk just fine. So I'm going to move on now to 1581 and make sure that it's working okay. So last but not least, I'm going to try out the 1581. And uh, I had a 1581 or I, I had a friend who let me borrow his 1581 when I was running a BBS back in the 1980s. Uh, my BBS was called Temple of Syrinx. And uh, so I had it as obviously extra space for people to upload and download to. And so I had it then, but I have not had one in over 30 years because once I closed down my BBS, I gave it back to him. So he has it back, but now I've got my own 1581 to try. And I know 1581s are very popular these days and they're hard to get inexpensive, I'm told on eBay and everything else to pick them up. I don't have a lot of stuff with it. Well, I say not a lot. I do, I did get these. Um, they're all the Lodestar disc from when I picked up this mother load of all the different stuff. Let's see how this opens. So I've got all these different Lodestar disc in here uh, to try out with the 1581 and that's what I currently got in there is a Lodestar disc. So I'm just giving it, trying it out, seeing what all works in here. And uh, these are the what I have available. I have a few more that came with it in this mother load. Let me grab this. Let's put the Lodestar disc back in here. So the 1588 one seems to be working just fine. Um, so out of all the hardware that I got, everything just worked directly. Um, I did clean it up a little bit, but like I said, I haven't opened up any of this hardware yet to see what the inside looks like. Um, but the power supplies all work. Everything's working on that side. Um, I also got a, a Commodore 64C. So I'm going to hook the 1541C up to the 64C. Starts right up. Sid chip's working. I got volume. So everything works just perfect. So the six. 64C is also working, so again, a great pickup. Everything that I purchased is working perfectly. Very pleased. 
So I hope you enjoyed this edition of Floppy Deep Dive. Uh, please subscribe if you liked it. And I'm very pleased with all this hardware. Everything I picked up last weekend works perfectly. Uh, like I said, I'm still going to open it all up, clean it, and do some more little cosmetic stuff to it. But overall, not much for me to do. So until next Floppy Deep Dive, y'all stay safe and healthy. Goodbye.